Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and this is RFD Hobby. Now this week I'm really excited to show you a bunch of projects that I was able to make with this 20 watt diode laser here, which has been sent to me from Algo Laser. This one, I'll have some links to it in the description below where you can get this. I have done a couple of 20 watt diode lasers on the channel before, and there are definitely a few things about this one that I really like. Just a couple of features that really stand out on this one. I did obviously smash out a bunch of projects so we can sort of see what this thing can do for you. So we're gonna go through that now, as well as sort of give you a bit of an idea of the experience I had using this laser. So let's get stuck into that right now. So first thing was set up. Now this was really, really easy. Uh, I did it with my nine year old daughter. And honestly, if you're doing it that way, it'll still take you probably less than an hour to set this up. It was really simple. The instructions are very clear. And I like the belt drive system of this one. It's really nice. You can easily adjust it. That's probably a good tip for you as well. Once you sort of set these things up, if they do have the rubber belts, after a little bit of use of a day or two, you might want to be just keeping an eye on these as you go because these belts will stretch a little so uh, this machine is really easy to adjust and tighten those so i was really happy with that and the features on this one are you know you've got your standard stuff with your emergency stop button uh, it also has a safety key feature to lock out the machine if you don't want it to be accidentally turned on at any time the cable management for this one is really really cool so I found this one to probably have the best cable management I've seen yet. Uh, air inlet as well, as well as your cables here, and these are really well managed at the back. Nothing to sort of zip tie or tie down. It has these really nice metallic catches for your cables, so you can sort of bend those out, add cables in if you need to, or, or your air hose or whatever you might want to do. This worked really well for me. I had um, no issues at all. You'll see from the uh, mounting system as well as the focus gauge that they've included on the module. It's really simple, really easy to use. I really enjoy this setup. There's no screws and stuff, which can sometimes be a little bit cumbersome. And this held really well. It definitely doesn't move with this clamping system that they've used. So I'm really happy with that. Now I should also mention that this machine does come with an included air pump. Now this is a really good air pump I found as well. So it has got an adjustable airflow on it. So you can go, I believe up to 30 liters per minute, which is generally the standard of what you're looking for in an air pump for your 20 watt diode. And this one, like I said, is adjustable and it is controllable through the software as well. The other thing I really enjoyed about this one is that it is plugged into the machine itself. So it doesn't require a separate power supply. So having one of these that plugs direct in and is powered for, through the machine is very handy for me. And it worked really well, very happy with that power supply. I have seen a similar one to this before, uh, but like I said, this one being adjustable as well as being powered through the machine is definitely a huge advantage in my book. So as far as running the machine, there was no issue setting it up. We had it running on the software Lightburn, which is my preferred software for this. It was up and running in no time at all. Now, as far as the projects I went through, uh, there's a couple here you may recognize from an earlier video. So I did another one of these wood boxes. I really enjoy doing these. These are actually dice boxes so you, to hold your dice. I don't have the inserts in there at the moment, but these boxes here are actually made without glue so if you can get your uh, settings right and you know you're, you're measuring your timbers and setting up your projects you can get projects like this no glue apart from these you know emblems on the front and the borders which are glued on obviously because they're layered pieces of wood uh, but everything else the hinges uh, the box in here there's no glue required to get that together once you get your settings and your timber thickness is all exactly right I did cut some things up to a quarter inch with the plywood. This is oak plywood as well, so a little bit tougher, but it had no problems at all. This is just a little guitar stand I made for my three quarter size guitar. So uh, actually works really well and a great little project if you're looking for something to solve problems. You wanna do some maps as well when you get something like this. And this is obviously Middle Earth. Uh, it did an awesome job of this. Uh, even on this size, it managed to retain all the details, all the fonts, all the text in there is legible. So really, really happy with that. It did a fantastic job on that one. Uh, this was another fun one I did, which I really, really enjoyed. This was actually a layered racetrack. This is actually six layers of ply here, so it's quite thick, uh, but it looks fantastic. It's kind of a 3D, you know, 
picture of that circuit and uh, really, really cool. I made a ton, an absolute ton of tokens, uh, game tokens, both out of acrylic and out of MDF. This was another quarter inch ply piece. Uh, so this is actually cut through, all these little parts cut through for a clock face here. Obviously you have to change your settings with the different uh, types of wood you're using. I had no problems once you get it dialed in. It works great. Now I did cut stencils as well. If you like airbrushing and you want to airbrush stencils onto your terrain projects or you just like airbrushing, uh, you might find stencils really handy part of that. And this is just some cardboard, or not even cardboard, it's just cardstock, I guess. Um, so slightly thicker paper. And as you can see, it's cut that out really well. That's a airbrushing stencil for skulls. There's so many different things you could use that for. Paper cutouts and cardboard cutouts with no problem at all with this. Obviously it etches really well. Um, this is a Star Wars etch that you'll find for free online really easily. Now this was another really cool one I did here. This is again a layered cutout. So this is six different layers, I believe. Yeah, six or seven different layers of MDF into this skull. Now this is actually, I, I should have made this a little bit bigger. I just dropped the file straight onto the um, software and started cutting it, not realizing that I probably should have sized it up a little bit. And when it got to the very top here, this very top layer is super thin and quite bendy. So it's, it's less than a millimeter thick, this whole line that, uh, this top layered line around here. So uh, it, and it hasn't, it didn't burn through, it didn't cause any problems. I was still able to, you know, sand that lightly, very gently, obviously. This was just another afternoon project. So you can literally rip out something like this in, in a couple of hours. And that includes, you know, getting it all laid out on your software for the cut bit. Another really cool thing I've done before, and I tried to sort of push it a little bit this time was with the canvases. And uh, this is actually a superhero canvas, as you can see. And I just tried to push it to see, you know, if it would retain these details in here on this canvas and get those fine lines and it actually did a really good job. Another one that really surprised me is this one here. Now this might just look like another uh, etching where I've just dropped an image on there, but actually with this one here, what I did was I found this JPEG image uh, online and I actually did a trace of the image. So the Lightband software can trace black and white images. And again, I wasn't sure this would retain the details of the image because I actually moved the image completely off the etching for this one and I just used that tracing that the software did for me. And as you can see here, it's done a, an amazing job. And you can even see the, the tiny details, the artist name down the bottom, all of that has been retained. And again, you can change the settings to get lighter, darker, deeper if you want. All the etching seems to have a very defined outline on it. And that's because of uh, doing an etch first and then a line around those those shapes. I'll, do, I'll go into a little bit more in another video on that process, but just to let you know, this laser did a magic job on this one. I was really happy. That's just, uh, most of these projects are just on standard plywood. So there's nothing fancy about this other than some of them are pine and some of them are oak. They did send me these little metallic cards, which are really cool. You can use these to make business cards. As you can see, it will etch perfectly away the top layer and leave the metal underneath. Now you might've seen in a recent video, this project here. This is foam board with the paper still on. And what I've done is actually used the laser to cut a, a brick pattern in here and then used a heat gun to distort the surface somewhat so that it looks a little bit more realistic brick pattern. Now this is really hard to do uh, at this scale uh, with this kind of size of brick if you don't have a laser cutter to do it. But as you can see, it had no problem cutting through this foam board and making up this building, which is something you can also try and do with your laser cutter if you want to. Obviously, safety is a very big thing that you need to take into account when you're using your laser cutter. Never use it indoors without at least some sort of air extraction and glasses. Uh, if you're using it anywhere where other people can be walking around or seeing it but aren't wearing glasses, it's a good idea to have a hood or some sort of cover with air extraction, obviously. It's important to make sure that you have all the safety stuff you need, even if you're gonna use this outside, um, undercover, for example, on a, on a veranda or a patio or something like that. It's gonna generate, especially if you're cutting stuff, it's gonna generate a lot of smoke. If you're doing this for a few hours at a time, it can get a bit much. So especially if you're cutting timbers like MDF, you don't wanna be breathing that in. So 
as far as an effective laser goes, this thing is absolutely spot on. I've had literally no problems running it and all the projects I've done have just, yeah, have just, uh, as far as the cutting and, and the laser goes, I've had no issues. I mean, there was a couple projects where I didn't get to show you today. I did have a terrain project I was gonna build, but two full sheets of, of uh, parts cut before I started trying to put them all together and realized that I hadn't measured my thicknesses properly. So I'll put a link to this thing below. Like I said, there's a lot about this one that especially when it comes to the air pump, how easy it was to set up and this cable management that they have. I uh, just found this machine to be definitely up there as far as quality of life features that they have on this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you are looking to get yourself into, you know, this kind of laser, like I said, safety is paramount. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll hopefully have another video for you very soon. Thank you.